Today we're going to be talking about the Playmates MonsterVerse series, Godzilla Kong, the New Empire, Giant Godzilla Evolved. Right out of the box, Giant Godzilla really lives up to the name of Giant as he will be standing at over 11 inches tall. Not bad, slightly shorter than that of the Jada Toys RC Godzilla. That being said, I completely forgot to talk about the boxes for the Battle Roar figures. I mean, it's not like anything of note was really happening there. But again, I so supremely adore this color concept. And oh my god, look at that image of Godzilla on the back. Just look at that neck! Godzilla's giving Corey Taylor a run for his money. I want to see that scream off. <laughs> An image of Godzilla, Godzilla's name, a little read up on things. It's standard box fare. Again, I just wanted to talk about the color scheme. Purples, pinks, blues, right up my alley. Vaporwave-ish. Now we can talk about the toy. So Giant Evolved Godzilla, in comparison to that of the Battle Roar Evolved Godzilla, does do a few things different. One of those things being, I feel like the elbow spike and the tip of the tail over here match up just a tiny bit better with the translucent bits. Mind you, I'm saying tiny because it is technically supposed to be pink and not red. I know I'm trying to make a point like this about a kid's toy, but what are you going to do? We're going to get the same body color as the Battle Roar figure had. The translucent dorsal fins are going to be a bit brighter. And like I said, the arm spikes and the tip of the tails, they're going to differ from one another. And Godzilla's head isn't going to be angled out like he's trying to look over the Applebee's menu to get a glimpse of those warlocks. I see your game, bro. So if you were torn on the possibility of purchasing the giant figure versus just getting the six inch or the battle roar just because they're kind of samey. Now you know the differences between the two and the similarities. Detail wise, it's not the same as the GVK giant Godzilla, but in terms of its quality, it's about the same and it gets the job done. That on top of the fact that we get some new articulation possibilities whilst also losing one, not to mention screw holes, I think this figure is a 50-50 combination of Playmates improving and doing a little bit of the same with what works. Oh boy, just look at how they've thinned up Godzilla's waistline. Unrealistic body expectations, even hitting the kaiju. I gotta say, I'm really not all that upset about Godzilla having a skinnier waist. Uh, I guess it's just my indifference overall to that of Godzilla x Kong at this point. I am warming up to this design, though. I mean, I always loved the pink. It's just the design was just like, all right, it's not offensive. And I guess as far as the paint job goes, I do like that Godzilla's chest, underbelly, and crotch, and even the underside of his neck is properly peppered with that underbelly paint we saw on the Battle Roar figure, despite mostly being a different color. Godzilla Godzilla from a front on shot actually doesn't look all that wall-eyed. It looks like the eyes are actually pointed straight, which that's a plus. And honestly, the teeth ain't all that bad either. Definitely an improvement from the oatmeal-ish looking Battle Roar Godzilla's teeth. The elbow slash bicep spikes over here are going to have very minimal details on them. Nothing crazy, but enough to communicate that something's jutting out of his elbow slash bicep. Both of the elbow spikes are going to look like that. Now I guess we can take a look at the dorsal fins, right? Just like the Battle Roar figure, these dorsal fins are going to look rather lovely. I like the details on them. I like how translucent they are. I guess I really don't have any complaints over here. I mean, they look cool. It's just, you know, the fall off between translucent to just yogurty pink and everything. I don't know. Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe the red does just look better. I know they're supposed to be pink, and I said that already, but... Uh... Is conversation. Godzilla's Thagomizer back here looks rather nice in terms of detail and paint, sure. I'm just really starting to like the idea of Godzilla's Thagomizer, and I guess I just really like that they look like three dorsal fins that were split down the middle. I can imagine that inflicting all sorts of pain on any who oppose, which is nice. The detail is going to follow throughout this portion of the tail as we move into the translucent bits. And yeah, it is what it is. These translucent dorsal fins really look nice on camera and they photograph quite nicely too. And I like how the center row looks a bit brighter when you have him at a profile shot, but when you turn him, the presence of more dorsal fins kind of blocking out the light over here, making them look redder. Again, I know they're not supposed to be red, but it's just a cool, not feature, but just a happy accident, I guess, right? It's like one of those lenticular photos where when you shift it, the image changes, except here, it's like the color changes. 
yeah. It's a paint and detail norm for that of Playmates. Not the best, but extremely serviceable, and definitely a lot better than just being one or two solid colors. I wonder which giant Godzilla looks better, Godzilla X Kong or GVK? Thankfully, I don't gotta do too much work for that one. And really, it's quite cool seeing just how much these two differ from one another, both in terms of design and the overall genetic makeup of them. Sure, they both do still look like cheap plastic toys, but the overall blueness of GVK Godzilla versus the overall dark navy blueness of GXK's Godzilla. The red and the blues co-mingling, this guy having underbelly paint, this guy not having that, but having a nice shading going along his limbs and body. I don't know. It's just interesting. It's cool. I can't wait to put both of these guys on the shelf side by side and just... Look at it. Plus, all of New Boy's teeth are going to be painted, unlike the old boy whose just bottom row of teeth were painted. I still say this is impressive work, even if it was just a slight little spritz. That looks too good for a $20 toy. Speaking of which, this guy was $20, this guy was $25. Does translucent plastic really warrant that extra $5? No, but... I guess it looks cooler. So where are we at in terms of paint and detail? Paint-wise, in comparison to what we once got, it feels mostly the same. The shading on the side of Godzilla's body for the GVK release versus the underbelly paint for the GXK release, it feels like a decent enough trade-off. Plus, with the presence of translucent plastic for his dorsal fins, yeah, I quite like that. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that. Hold on. I mean, I did notice the fact that his tongue was painted. I guess I just didn't mention it. But hey, oh, the roof of his mouth is going to be painted too. And there's even going to be details in there as well. Yeah, paint and detail wise, in comparison to what we got, I feel this guy is still on par, if a bit better ish. Two solid stars for paint and details. Let's take a look at some other stuff. Articulation wise, like I said, we lost a point of articulation, but gained one. Unlike the original giant Godzilla from Playmates, this guy can actually close his mouth and open it right back up. Not a bad trade-off if you ask me. The right arm will be able to move up about that far, which is rather far, and then back down about that far. I'm putting pressure on this and it's not moving any further back. And since this is a cheap plastic toy, I will not be pushing my luck with it. Left arm up about that far and then back down not too far i don't mean to frame that in any sort of a negative light or anything like that i mean it goes from neutral to high up to just lunging forward rather nicely we technically don't need godzilla's arms to go all the way back since we were gifted the opening and closing mouth what did we lose we lost the wrist swivel oh my god however will i live the legs can kick forward about that far and then back the actual meant to be posed further ahead head leg over here can kick up about that far and then back a lot farther than the actual leg that's meant to be posed back. Huh? Yeah, we've got the pre-posed leg stance again and I'm not going to pitch a tent about it. Nice swivel at the ankle over here, which I wasn't expecting. It doesn't do much in the realm of posability, but it's nice to have the option. And now for the tail. If you remember the GVK giant Godzilla, it was more so just a peg that could swivel. This time around though, we have a ball joint. It can move up and down. It can move side to side. You actually get a pretty decent curl at the base of the tail with this guy. And I don't feel it breaks the major illusion all too bad either. And the tail can swivel. It's the best of both worlds. Good job, playmates. So technically, we get an all new point of articulation with an articulated jaw, and we get an upgraded point of articulation with a ball joint over here at the tail. That coupled with the arms, the legs, and the ankle swivels, it's not bad. 25 bucks, big plastic toy, decent enough articulation, I'll give it a solid star. Inoffensive as the word could be. And for a nice added little bonus, yeah, look at that. They almost look orange when you do it like this, but very, very translucent. Very much will be catching the light beautifully. And it's nice to see that level of translucency on the tail, too. So much so that I wish the entirety of the tail was translucent. But that's just a nitpick. A goji nitpick. Listen, that MatPat video hurt me internally. I had to at least make a tiny reference to it. Thank you for your service there, MatPat.
Size comparisons? Giant Godzilla, Giant Monkey, Giant Tin Can, Mega Lizard, Mega Monkey, RC Lizard, still the best toy Playmates has ever come out with, ever. Movie Monster Series Tin Can, Godzilla and Kong, Eat Ray Godzilla from Playmates, Battle X Kong from Playmates, Battle Version Mecha Godzilla from Playmates, Skull Crawler from Playmates, Playmates Shimo, Shuko, Suko, I can't remember, and Doug plus rock. King series final climax Shin Godzilla, two very big boys. The giant boy is rather giant. You'll either like it or you'll hate it. You've seen every inch of this figure after this here review. And honestly, I'm quite excited to pick up Giant Kong and Giant Scar King after looking at this guy too. Especially since Kong looks like he got the brunt of the budget too. I mean, look at this thing. Oh, these are pretty cool bananas. <laughs> and that's it. Hope you all enjoyed tonight's video and I hope you're all ready for the next video. We've seen three Titan Tech figures make their way out from Playmates. Now it's time for Titan Evolution. And my god, I hope this takes the frick off. Messing around with this figure reminds me of the days of messing around with Trendmasters toys. And quite honestly, had they not gone belly up when they did, I feel like this is something we would have seen. Maybe with some ooze in there for good measure. Two more videos remain. That's all I got. Bye.